Well, hi there and welcome back to the Drawing Database, Professor Mark Leone. Today we're going to spend 15 minutes with the drawings of ancient China and look a little bit at their aesthetic technique and uh, their subject matter and how they used value and perspective and line uh, in primarily black and white and also text. So what we have in front of us are kind of a scroll-like feeling, right, where we have a very vertical composition and we have a landscape that reads from bottom here at the bottom upwards and we see that the bottom is closer to us in the picture plane spatially without the use of atmos atmospheric perspective so this gives a sense of flatness to the to the uh, image and gives us less of the deeper spatial effect that were maybe our western trained eyes those of you that are in the west I know some of you certainly aren't um, gives us a little bit more atmospheric perspective but it's chock full of interesting detail the house in through here the cliffs right the movement of the mountains and the vegetation around that all led by really sophisticated use of drawn ink brush uh, as well as selective dark areas that give us some anchors. We have these dark areas here and we move up through the composition really anchored by those dark areas as we get to the pinnacle or the top uh, area of the composition. Then of course the traditional use of stamping for artist signatures and then the um, script at the top here. So it reminds us somewhat of Egyptian work where it's certainly flatter, diff very different style, but also some script or scribing of actual written text, both here stamping and then above in the column there as well. Here we have a lovely and very sensitively drawn and rendered landscape where we enter the composition roughly here where the placement of detail in some darks with the beautiful rendering, delicate rendering of the trees and the mist and the fog here and then we move our composition diagonally. This is a little bit more sophisticated use of spatial depth, the illusion of spatial depth on, depth on the flat plane and then as we move into this area we get a kind of a strong horizontal break here and then we get this sort of, uh, well this really foggy haziness and then we move up the diagonal here upwards here and then to the text and also to the stamping and the beautiful red uh, phrasing here as well. So really sophisticated not only in terms of composition and movement but also the sort of colloquial um, or the icon, iconic usage if you will of atmospheric fading both the foggy kind of mist that we have where mountainscapes um, tend to lose their base a little bit because of the uh, fog and also the tops as they begin to uh, recede upward or also deeper into atmospheric uh, space and then again the really sensitive delicate rendering that we see within the uh, trees themselves are just lovely very lovely drawn anchored by this cropped out image here and then pushed pushed that way here we see somewhat darker image. We get a little reflection from the, the actual photograph that was taken of that, but we do see the same kind of idea of nature being the dominant force in, in the, uh, the artist's ovoir or imagery. And we see a very column-like composition where we enter here, we have a bridge, here we have a nice delicate waterfall, and then we take a journey really almost straight upward into the jungle type atmospheric conditions that we go here culminating in this beautiful organic type of uh, outlining and then we get a lovely deep spatial effect don't we of atmospheric perspective we get this nice crisp edge here then a little fogginess and and dist more distant tree here and then very distant uh, these angular sort of uh, mountain cliffs uh, that are indicative of, of, of some Chinese landscape very very far in the distance so the understanding of atmospheric perspective and also the use of darker value and detail especially running right through here this is closest to us so notice how dark this is notice how detailed and how contrasty the value is then we have a medium range uh, distant middle ground and then we have the deep 
uh, foreground here where you really get three distinct uh, uh, foreground, middle ground, and the, uh, excuse me, background actually, uh, way back in the back. So we get a lovely sense of depth, atmospheric depth that what is for, really foreshadows um, by quite a bit of time the Renaissance. Here we get a sense of family at work or at play or at dinner being served. Uh, probably a little bit of all of that going on in this particular image. Um, we get interesting stylized uh, people with children working and playing and serving, serving tea and serving some kind of of food to the older elders in through here where the women are separate you see that here but technically it's it's um it reminds me of indian mughal painting or miniatures very contour uh the figures are a little bit off scale but they have a natural looking feeling to them in their contour line weight they're really delicately drawn and then painted over with some flat space and there's some really beautiful attempts at orthogonal uh, perspective where we get some depth going back here with our diagonals. However, in true one-point perspective, this line would be pushed over further, and this these areas would be receding here to the uh, closer objects at the table in through there. Nevertheless, the style, the um, expression uh, in the drawn and also painted image is, is very lovely with the, the uh, screens here in the image too to separate boundaries so we get multiple viewpoints as we come around spatially we read this situation of a young young uh, servant putting uh, wood into the stove to heat tea and then we get the lovely uh, 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 area here as we come up to a table another uh, servant whoops excuse me through there uh, pouring and uh, utilizing some some sort of device on this table here but lovely we have the bamboo lovely drawing delicate where perspective is relaxed and we get a sense of a stylized view of the world and then lastly another beautiful landscape where we get uh, a mix of atmospheric perspective but also a raising of the composition higher to signify deeper space although we don't get the the mystic -y, mystic sort of foggy like qualities of the perspective so we're to read this as being closer down here the middle ground here and then the background there in much of human art before a true um, full usage of linear perspective which was in the renaissance also in rome and probably in greece but certainly uh, lacking somewhat here although it, it it, it still is a beautiful and charming, lovely, delicate drawing that we see. Let's, let's go in a little bit deeper where we can see a little bit more of the intricacies of the delicate detail. One of the attributes of this particular style at this particular time was a great degree of uh, intricate, intimate, rendered detail. I think the waterfall here to the left is... You know, just absolutely gorgeous and stylized coming down and then we zip over across the mountain into an intimate home with a couple it looks like in their enjoying time in nature and we see a little bit more civilization in different um, scales and then we start to come back up again with this flow in through here that allows us to go this way then allows us to take a journey also and through here so really masterful kind of design composition and that's something that you can begin to look at in your own designs in your own drawings whether studying from the figure from life or for your own is diagramming diagram out um, uh, arrows and flow to help you with direction etc to get a sense of movement of eye movement and then we finally get a horizon line here so we're very low down the composition moving up here further away and of course we get this lovely uh, river flow in the the background middle part of the background let me get the rest of that most of that out of there and then we see the the river it's kind of pixelated but you get this how flat that sits down nicely and then we get the really the horizon line about right in through uh, there in terms of the the composition to read quite lovely to finish off the design of this beautiful, beautiful, what is probably 
a screen of some type, inked and drawn. So there you have it, ancient Chinese for the most part, drawing into intimate, detailed, um, and polished contour quality with some sfumato or what we call atmospheric foggy uh, perspective that really moves um, the composition both forward and deeper into space. Really lovely examples here. Here we have a last image of Chinese, uh, more ancient Chinese drawing. Fairly naturalistic and accurate representation of both horse and rider. Relatively flat, we see them in straight kind of profile from the side, although we do see the head of the human rider in slightly three-quarter with the side plane to the, the head in through here, so we get a little bit of that boxy kind of feeling uh, there in perspective as well. And then delicate contour lining, not only in the features of the horse, the delicate outlining that we see um, all over the horse in through here, but also, of course, in the the human figure in a fair, a fair strong degree of accuracy. And then some modeling, a little bit of modeling into the the forms of the horse, the mane, the back, buttock, the leg, etc., and the hooves are really naturalistic. And then we get the signature text and also the wonderful stamping, which acts as kind of a floating, beautiful sort of design elements. Because we don't get a horizon line, we don't get any any background landscape as well.